everyone, welcome to Buckle Up Podcast. I'm Natalia Earl and I'm a certified business and life coach that loves talking to people. I'm fascinated by humans and how our brain works. What is it that makes a decision good or bad and how does that decision ultimately shape our path and destiny? Everyone loves to talk about success, but what about the flip side? How about adversity? Failure is such a big and often necessary part of life and it's simply unavoidable. So I invite you to join me on this inspiring, honest, unpolished interview show with breathtakingly real conversations that go deep on setbacks and hardships that are part of the puzzle that ultimately lead to growth, discovery of inner greatness, and what makes us resilient. Grab your helmet and buckle up, people. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but what a ride it will be. Today, we are back with Dr. John Jaquish, who has spent years researching and developing improved approaches to health. He's the inventor of the most effective bone density building medical technology, which is now partnered with Tony Robbins and OsteoStrong for rapid cleaning deployment. Dr. J is an inventor of X3, a technology that is proven to develop muscle much faster than conventional weightlifting, all with the lowest risk of joint injury. His methods are used in training the world's most elite athletes and associations, such as the entire Miami Heat organization, various NFL and NBA players, as well as Olympians. Dr. Jay Quish has been called the Tony Stark of the fitness industry by the Chicago Tribune, has been featured on many of the top health podcasts. He speaks at scientific conferences all over the world, is an editor of multiple medical journals, and is a research professor at Rushmore University. I know lately you have been researching dry fasting. So Mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit more, why should one fast and what happens when you do? So what I started doing, let me just take a a little step back from that, uh, which I don't think anybody knew I was doing this. I don't even really think I knew I was doing this, but <clears throat> when I wrote weightlifting is a waste of time. Uh, mm-hmm. Here's the book. Yes. Um, when I wrote it, um, I, the objective was to collect a whole bunch of different fat loss strategies. And uh, you know, some of them work very well. Uh, some of them work very well for short periods of time. Some of them don't really work very well at all, like caloric restriction, like eating less and moving more. We've been telling people to do that for 75 years, and the Western society is fatter and sicker than ever. Uh, also, there's still some foolish people out there who think a calorie is a calorie, and there's been so many studies by top minds in the field that specifically say a calorie is not a calorie, because if you have a calorie of fructose, you have a calorie of protein, the fructose is borderline poison, And the protein is is absolutely needed by the body, especially if it's essential amino acids. So like just saying that is so irresponsible. It's sort of like, uh, it's it's as irresponsible as, well, I like coffee in the morning, but uh, it's a vasoconstrictor and so is cocaine. So I'll just switch to cocaine every day, right? That'd be terrible advice. Yeah. Um, they are both vasoconstrictors, but their mechanisms are enough different where one will limit your life. The other one won't. <clears throat> so, um, I think fitness, because, uh, there's so many fans of an extraordinary lower level of intelligence. Uh, you know, there's no barrier to entry and you know, the gym memberships are $9 a month. So you get a lot of people who, really don't know uh, anything about anything. And uh, the funniest thing about those people is, as we learned from the Dunning-Kruger study in 1999, the dumber people are, the more they believe they have all the answers because what they don't know is too complex for them. So it's like, it doesn't exist. So their simplistic view of things is 100% of the information you need. Uh, So, yeah, that, that's, and that's really rough in fitness because 
so much of the industry is is em employs people who just can't like they can't wrap their head around how complicated the body is it's not easy and i i like people want a simple like one sentence answer for a lot of nutrition questions and it's like you, you probably don't realize the question you ask really deserves like an hour long lecture right and they're like you know of course they can't absorb that kind of information. So like, well, what the hell do you mean? Hour long lecture. Well, you're, you're expecting there's just a simple answer to the question. And there just isn't because there's a lot of things going on in the human body. And it's tough when you're really trying to show somebody something about nutrition. It, it's, it doesn't go into a meme. Like you really got to learn some stuff, but once you learn it, it benefits you forever. So like, there's a lot of nutrition mistakes that I don't make. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is why people see me like any time in the year, I got very visible abdominals and, you know, like vascularity, like everything's lean and, you know, you can, you can see separation between, you know, the muscles that control my fingers and stuff. Like, why is it like that? Why is it like that year round? Well, is it, I know what to eat and what not to eat and when. And yes. when is what you're talking about with intermittent fasting. So <clears throat> calorie restriction, uh, the, its biggest downfall, like it is very similar to uh, intermittent fasting. Basically, you go through a period of time and you're taking in less calories and there's a benefit. You go through lipolysis, you start using body fat as fuel. So that's good. The, the biggest practical difference between the two is your appetite goes way up with calorie restriction. And you really have no appetite with intermittent fasting. Now, fortunately, uh, I, I appeal to busy professionals. So I kind of pivoted a little bit as soon as we launched. And um, yeah, they're a smarter group of people and they get it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they realize like just because they're lifting weights and it might have worked a little bit that, you know, you look around and who's really like, who really looks like a pro athlete? Who really has an absolutely incredible physique? Who looks like a Greek statue? Like there used to be a lot of people that look like that. Otherwise there'd be no Greek statues because the sculptor had to have somebody standing there while they were making the sculpture. So there were fit people in the past and it seems so rare now, maybe one out of 10,000 people, maybe one out of 100,000 really are in great shape. And I'm thinking like NFL player kind of shape. Right. Um, but now... Pretty much anybody can look like that with what we now know about variable resistance and also just bringing some sanity to nutrition. Um, there's a lot of silly products out there in nutrition that, that like to promise that they'll give you what you want and they won't. Uh, in fact, they'll give you the opposite. Usually they make it fatter. Um, but it's also what a lot of people want to hear. Um, the, one of the most common diet questions asked um, I did sort of a Google analysis, like how many hits, how many, <clears throat> how many pages, how popular, how popular is a term to advertise on? Cause that tells you the value of the term, right? Well, one of the highest value terms was how to lose weight without changing my diet. Well, if you're overweight, uh, it was because of your diet. So clearly that has to change. So the most popular question is an unrealistic and basically stupid question. Like who would, who would even think to ask that question? Yeah. Well, it's the most popular thing. How, so, uh, <laughs> you know, the fact that they don't care mm -hmm. that it's, you know, the, the, the thought process is non-existent to get to that question. Um, they just want an answer that's the answer they want. And, and, uh, and we see the same thing in politics. People. So uh, the problem is like, when you know, like food's an addiction, obviously, like otherwise nobody would be obese. Why is it an addiction? Because we keep uh, eating carbohydrates for one. Carbohydrates make you hungrier. They don't give you satiation. Uh, some are worse than others. Fructose is horrible. Um, glucose and, and sucrose are much better, but still come with some of the same challenges. Um, a lot of people think fructose is fine because it's, that comes in fruit. Well, when it's in fruit, it comes with a lot of fiber, which slows down the digestion. There's absolutely no benefit to fiber, by the way, other than that. 
Like it doesn't help move things along in your digestive system. That's been disproven for the last probably 15 years. Um, Cause people still have that like myth, like drilled into their head. Like, Oh, I need fiber. Like, Oh really? You sure? Where'd you read that? You know, like, did you hear that on like good morning America? Cause that's not a scientific show. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter how good a diet plan is if nobody's going to follow it. Right. So that that's, that's the other thing. So now I'm trying to kind of go the other way and say like, how, what can we do to get a lot, like the majority of the benefits without making life I don't want to say unbearable because I do all these things and I don't find any of it unbearable, but I realize most people either think they do because they won't try it or do and really just get frustrated and then they won't do anything. Yes. So <clears throat> I've landed on a few things. Um, part of the reason I like dry fasting is you get the same benefit as fasting, except because your body becomes very dehydrated. However, very few people die of dehydration. Isn't that weird? Like you almost haven't even heard of that. So the answer is when your body gets dehydrated, it finds water. Where does it find water? And the only non-vascular tissue you have, which is body fat. So it pulls water out of body fat. And then when the fat, the fat cell becomes depleted of water, it destroys itself. So you get like a surge of energy when that happens because you have like a spike of um, free fatty acids in your bloodstream. Now, as long as you don't do something dumb, like eat a candy bar at the end of your dry fast, which then would spike triglycerides and would be a recipe for a stroke, which is something that I've had to tell. No one's ever had a stroke who's done this, but I tell because I tell them like, you, you, you know, when you, when you start doing things that are tr triggering processes in the body that are there to help you, and then you go into exactly the opposite, like there's going to be repercussions, right? You know, you, you, you just can't go and do that. Like if you're going to eat healthy, like there's no more cheat meals. I hate that term, by the way, because right. that's another thing people need to get, get away from. Oh, I've had a hard day. I deserve a piece of chocolate cake. Oh, I've had a good day. I deserve a piece of chocolate cake. Guess what? You think you deserve a piece of chocolate cake every day. And it's just setting you back further and further and contributing to your chronic depression and body dysmorphia. You look in the mirror and you just feel terrible about yourself. And, uh, you know, little kids are laughing at you on the subway. Like it, it, it just goes dark real fast. And so, and I see these people who are suffering and they'll, they'll message me and they'll be like, can you give me some tips? And I know whenever I get that message, it's just like, oh, you failed already. You just want a tip. You don't want to change right. your lifestyle. Right. You think I'm just going to tell you to like, you know, eat more strawberries. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like, they just want some like little like thing. It's like they're not committed pill. at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I try, I try and give them a useful answer without saying that, because that's certainly not going to motivate anybody either. Right. Uh, but they're also kind of a lost cause. So could, because you have to say like, I'm willing to completely change my life. Um, which doesn't mean it has to be hard. Cause what I learned after the first book 